Oh, I'm Maureen McMillan, and I was the lead photographer in the Honoring Seniors Portrait Project. Uh, I had some help by Kathy Bloomquist, who produced all of the audio. Uh, we have Cameron Montgomery, who's doing this lovely video for us. Uh, Anya Gangster, Andy Troll, the artistic co-directors and fabulous grant writers, uh, Barry's Bay Home Support, uh, as well as uh, the Seniors Active Living Center in Killaloo. There were 63 seniors in total, uh, some came in couples, some came by themselves, who came out to be photographed in support of this project. It really challenged my own perceptions about aging and what it's like to be a senior. The lady I photographed who was 102 was probably one of the spunkiest human beings I have ever met in my life. I have a very soft spot for uh, my elders in my community. I love our seniors so much. I think even people in my age kind of overlook the uh, contributions that seniors have to make to our communities. And I think hopefully this project will be like a wake-up call and we can start to shift our perceptions. Do we need more lipstick? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, no, All right, I wasn't thinking you're taking my picture today. Oh, so. you look beautiful. Oh yeah, right. No, you do oh, in this light, yeah. Linda. You, you look do. absolutely beautiful. Oh well, thank you, thank you. I guess oh, we'll, we'll yeah, right. <laughs> Without being pregnant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Who are you? Hi, well, I'm a citizen of the local Madawaska Valley. I'm uh, born and raised in Killaloo, uh, lived out of the area for a while, and then returned to the Wilno Berries Bay area in 1979 when I took a job uh, as a registered nurse at the Valley Manor that had just opened the year before. And I worked there for a total of 34 years, uh, first as a registered nurse, and then um, 23 years as the administrator of the long-term care home. So I've, uh, I've had a, mainly my career has been in caring for the elderly citizens of our community. Aging, I believe, is what you make of it. Um, your actual age is only one factor and I believe not really the significant factor. Uh, aging, I think, is more about your level of dependence or independence. Uh, it's a state of health. Uh, I've known uh, a few 100-year-olds who could tend their garden and felt that they should go home and not be at the home, at the nursing home, because everyone else there was too old. And yet I also have experience with people who were 70 and because of illness and debilitation uh, probably looked closer to 90 or 100. So uh, I think your age is just a simple number uh, your interest in life, your interest in learning and uh, ongoing adventure in life is really probably the most important factor I, I think about aging. And uh, we are, to a lot of extent, uh, the determinants of our health and the determinants of our age. In actual fact, uh, you can't deny the year you were born, but you can deny some of the uh, old myths, you can um, try and negotiate a better life, no matter uh, how long you live. Oh, I love you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you. <laughs> and perhaps, I'm sorry, I'll probably think about 500 other things I should have said. But sure. Always, always. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Who would like to go now? Would you like to go to Sure, I'll go. Oh, Frank's going to come. Frank's going to come. I'm ready right now. I'm not as scared as I was. Okay. <laughs> Just be scared of the cords. That's the only okay. thing. Okay. 
Now where am I supposed to look? Look at the camera. At the or camera. that's weird. Look at the mic or you know. Okay. But your goal is to look at the camera. God, you look so good, Frank. <laughs> I know. Look at this lighting. Oh. Who are you? Uh, Frank Tedimer. I live near Hopefield. I live near Emmett. And I live near Rockingham, somewhere in the triangular area of the center of all that. What are some things you wished people knew about aging? <clears throat> wow, there's lots to know. There's lots I didn't know, that's the main point. I've spent most of my years uh, working physically and basically wore my body down to a nubbin. So I've had all kinds of parts replaced and uh, it's something that I could have prevented likely if I had been a little easier on productivity. And I kind of think that's a good thing for men to pay attention to because as a male, we're all told to be productive and bring home the bacon and all that sort of early, early childhood conditioning. And it's taken me till my 60s before I went, okay, that's not true. <laughs> uh, the other thing about aging that's interesting is that if you're working for yourself, which I did a lot of various different small jobs and small businesses that were generally failures, um, the only thing that I actually got to pay much uh, CPP on or whatever it's called, the uh, pension plan, was the last 15 years. And if you're only paying in the last 15 years, you don't get diddly squat. You get less than a thousand bucks a month, which is a kind of a reality sandwich that I didn't chew on or even taste. I didn't even consider it when I was uh, in earlier years, in the 40s and 50s, when I could have been thinking about it. So I think that's something to consider for people who are trying to ignore aging. Uh, I think what Linda was saying about the idea of yourself is pretty important. However, the body of yourself usually says something else. So if you've had a lot of injuries, then you're going to have a lot of aches and pains, just which is kind of normal and to be expected. And if you get kind of uptight and a little upset about how come I'm hurting all the time when I wake up in the morning, you look back and you reflect and you go, it was up to you. So my daughter said when she saw the picture of you in your room with your cactuses, I don't know if you remember, we went in your house and we, what, what, you know, you had all those cactuses set up and we oh, did yeah. some pictures in there and she's like, Frank is like goals. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I want to be Frank when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> get squared around here. <laughs> I'm Marita Dmansky. I was born and raised and did my schooling in Barry's Bay. Left Barry's Bay to go to, to nursing school. Um, I've had a terrific career. I taught nursing for many, many, many years, like 25 maybe as a nursing instructor, professor, uh, and I was educated to be a di uh, director of nursing in a, an acute care setting and an administrator in a long-term care setting. So I decided towards the end of my career that what the heck, what have I got to lose here? So I was the, as a director of nursing in Eastern Ontario in two different hospitals for 15 years before I retired. I lived in Ottawa, uh, retired from Ottawa after my husband died, and I thought, gee, what am I going to do with my life now? So did I want to live in a 40-foot, 40 40-story 40 high-rise? And no, I didn't want to do that. So I decided I'm going to move home. And my family were just appalled that I should move home. What are you going to do up there? I said, we'll see what I'm going to do up there. So I did that. I have had a very active life in Barry's Bay, believe it or not. I have a lot, a lot of friends. And my friends are not my age. Few are. Most, the youngest one is 42 years old. And she's the, the director of nursing at St. Francis at the moment. I love people. 
I love to go out. I don't know what it is, but I certainly, certainly have a lot of friends. There's no doubt about that. I was always an, out, uh, an outgoing person. So with aging, with me, nothing really changed because I'm the same person now that I was at 50 and at 40 in personality and whatever the case may be, except I have more time now. As time moved on, when you hit 65, 75, and I'm going to be 85 in a couple of weeks. So I just said to myself, well, okay, here goes. I'm not going to live forever. And there's longevity in my mother's side of the house. I have an aunt in Barry's Bay that's going on 101. My mother died at 101. I'm hoping to get there myself. So I just decided, being a positive person, that, and that's key to aging. You, you can't be a crybaby, or you can't sit in the corner and feel sorry for yourself. You've got to stimulate your brain. You have to go out socially. You have to look presentable. Uh, you have to do all those things that maybe weren't always so important when you were younger because you had family and so on and so forth, so you didn't have time for that. But when you're older, you have lots of time. You really, honest to God, do. Like, you know, I have a couple of sisters that say, oh, God, I'm busy. What the hell are you busy at? You know, like, what? I'm kind of laid back. You know, I can take it or leave it. So I just decided that I was going to continue with with that kind of mindset, and I have done that. I, I exercise, I eat well, I sleep well, I'm a reader, I read the newspaper, The Ottawa Citizen, from page one to page 31 every day. I'm very interested in politics. I could tell you anything, federally or provincially or municipally. I, I'm just involved. I'm just involved. And my body now keeps telling me I'm a little slower, as I just said, but boy, my mind is in overdrive. Life is a circle, like this. And you start at 12, maybe one minute after 12, and you're a newborn, and you're a, a toddler, and you're in grade one, and, and it, it goes on. It goes on. And when you get to my age, you're at number 10 on the clock. Number 10, you only have two more digits to go till the end. And why would you not want to uh, make the best of it? That's the best of what you have. And I have no tolerance for people that complain. And I'm around old people quite a bit, and I think, oh my God, oh my God. You, know. <laughs> you certainly have to stay well. You have to, in today's world, from a medical perspective, you have to be the best advocate for yourself that you can be. My young Nova Scotian female physician in Ottawa, she was tall like me. She got out of her chair and she said, I think, Marita, you, you go up there to the valley and you'll be an advocate for all the seniors. And I thought, yeah, I can do that, sure. In the last year, I had a two surgeries that were devastating to me with treatment. And this is just an example. On my last visit, I said to the radiological oncologist, all right, I'm not falling through these cracks. Where do I fit in here? He just looked at me. I said, I'm serious. I guess he thought, whew, I wonder where she come from. She's determined, advocating for myself. That's what you have to do. And I'm saying that because I think that's important for whether you're a nurse or whether you know the healthcare system or you don't know it. That's an important, very important thing to be able to do. I just saw my surgeon last week, and I said to him, I'm not falling through the cracks here. There's no way. What are you going to do with me? I'm old, but I don't care. I'm not ready for the boneyard just yet, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he said, well, how would it be if I saw you in April of 2023? Whew. I thought, well, there. If you don't advocate and speak up for yourself, nobody else will. Yay! Yay! We're bringing you to my next appointment. <laughs>
All right, quiet on set. <laughs> <laughs> I have had the honour and pleasure the last seven years of living at Lake Clear, but I did spend all my summers and weekends there, as did my mom, as did her mom, and so on and so on. So um, Big Rock is my best buddy, Big Rock at Lake Clear, and anyone who hasn't been to Lake Clear, go and meet Big Rock. He's awesome. So that's my foundation, actually. And then the pine trees are the um, icing on the cake. I have been described as a social advocate and through community arts. I've hodgepodged with a lot of things. I love poetry. Um, I love everything. <laughs> if it was up to me, I would have 50 more lifetimes just having a blast. And you know, I have met people in, I don't know, something like 24 different countries, and I've yet to meet someone who didn't have an awesome, awesome story. So I urge people to go anywhere you can and just talk to everyone you can, because everyone, in my opinion, has a really awesome story and a lot of wisdom to share. Just do everything and anything you possibly can. Life is so exciting, and the clock is ticking as one of my beautiful um, previous interviewees had mentioned. It's true, we, you know, you go from 12 o'clock all the way around and you catch back up. And, you know, as I'm creeping very close to 70, which isn't that old, however, I keep thinking, you know, in, what do I want to do in the next 25 years? So I, I suggest to everyone, just embrace life the best you can and make one of those bucket lists and please tick off at least most of the items on that bucket list because you never know when, boom, there you are gone. And what was the process of having your photo taken like for you? Well, it was delightful because we did it in the trees that I live with and um, we also I also sat on the swing my late partner called his swing and what is really fascinating is when you look at the photograph of me sitting on the swing as well as the trees there is a blob of light and I'm sure it's him so it was a beautiful beautiful homage to Joe as well as a complete delight to me and you can photograph me amongst trees any day of the week as well as with stones. I absolutely adore them. It was a beautiful experience and I love how you made suggestions where you brought personality to the forefront. Yeah, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. It's been a real honor and pleasure to be part of this very exciting project. Thank you. I love your role. <laughs> and let's do it again <laughs> sometime. <laughs>
85 years ago. My name is Aurelia Skebel. I was born in 1928. I'm 93 years old. And I was born in Pembroke, but moved as a small child to Killaloo and spent most of my life here. So tell us about the location, the log house. Oh, for the picture. Yes. It meant a lot to us because it was our homestead. We grew up there and we still live right close by it. It's always been a something in our memories or a meeting place too. Meeting, eh? yeah. yeah. We would have our parties there and our stag and does and mm -hmm. anybody getting married, that's where you'd gather. So what was it like living in this house, in this it log was cold. house? Cold is the word I remember. <laughs> the water had freeze and the stove and the kettle. I don't know, we just didn't keep fires on all night. It wasn't easy. No. No, yeah. it wasn't. And then there was nobody. Like Aurelia had the tough job because she was the oldest. But uh, nobody there to show you proper ways of doing things. Eh? Honestly, when I, when, when I was about... Um, 14 or 15 and um, went and tried to get a summer job. We didn't have electricity still at that time when I was 14. And <laughs> I went to work for Jane Callahan. <laughs> and I didn't know how to, how a vacuum cleaner worked or any, she had to show me everything, eh? I didn't know any of that stuff. So. Anyway, we were pretty dense. Well. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! Merry My Christmas! My name is Charles Joseph Belair. I was born in Granamo, Quebec. Why did you start becoming Santa? What started Santa Claus? Okay, maybe you know her. She, she's a school teacher. Pia is her name, and, and her husband, Peter, they asked me to be Santa Claus. I said, okay, but I don't have a suit. They, they had it made, they brought me to the tailor, and she made it. Uh, at first, I was, I was nervous, but, but I was nervous for about five seconds. After that, I became good old Saint Nick. It was the same thing the first parade. I was excited, as much as every kid in the street, and I made a point. I'm waving to everybody, you know, I singled them all out and they all re response with a, with a big hand thing. I kept all the, the, the things that the kids gave me, you know, what they wanted for Christmas and things like that. Like one kid, he gave me a page, then another page and another page. And he said, I want everything. No. Your dad rich? <laughs> Even the high school kid who came, you know, and they wanted their picture with Santa Claus. I never refused anybody. Mm -hmm. Never. Because you've been in a lot of pictures, haven't you? Oh. They took tons of pictures of me. Tons of them. Ho, ho, ho. You know? Ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas! A picture holds time, memories, and split seconds and magical moments. Holding past memories, magical mysteries, split seconds, forever kept. A picture forever holds memories and moments, past, present, and future. Just a split second, I forever hold in hand this magic moment. And a picture forever holds memories and moments, past, present, and future. A picture forever holds memories and moments, past, present, future. Holding memories forever, mysterious, Picture magical time, moments. Memories in split seconds, magical Holding moments. Memories. Forever mysterious, magical forever. moments. Holds memories Just and magic moments. moments. Past, Past, memory, present, present, future. Hand. 
with second Holding forever. memories, forever mysterious. Holding past moments, magical mysteries, magical split moments. seconds, forever kept. This magic moment, memory, picture holds time, memory, seconds, seconds, magical, magical moment, moments. I split seconds, this magic memory, moment, I forever this hold. This magic moment, I split seconds, memory, I forever hold. Just, Just a split, split second, second I forever hold in hand, this magic moment. moments. Past, holding present, past moments, future, magical mysteries, holding split seconds, split forever, seconds forever. A picture holds time, the magic memories moment, split seconds, the split magic second moments. memory. This magic moment, memory I hold in hand, split second forever. You know, I don't ever, ever remember, I mean, I left home when I was 14, I don't ever remember living on a farm, they had a camera, I don't ever remember after the war when I moved back to Montreal, then uh, there was never a picture taken. It wasn't easy back then to have pictures taken, you had to get a photographer, you had to... We didn't have cameras when I left far back, we were too poor. We did have a camera, there was a camera in the yeah. family, a real old, you uh, pulled it up and it was all this accordion-like uh, thing, eh? And, uh, I have always had a camera. I've always taken a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures. When you could afford to get them developed then, you had to take them down to the drugstore and they sent them away for them to take a week, eh, for them to come back. And, um, and then you'd go and get them and it was so nice to see them then. And I guess it was, uh, I don't know, we never needed pictures, we never thought about taking pictures. It wasn't like today, where the cell phones, and you're taking pictures constantly. Yeah, your father never had a camera. Never took mother, a picture in his life. I never, heard, no. never took a picture mm, in his no. life. No. I don't think your mom and dad don't know how, what a camera looks no. like. No, no, <laughs> no, never did. Who took the pictures in my family? We all did. My grandmother. She was one of the first ones that I can remember taking pictures, actual pictures. And I know the army used to come through all the time and they would stop and they would stop at grandma's. Okay, and they would be a party. And I know she took pictures of the guys. She was the first one, I think, in Madawaska to get a box camera. You know, Kodak box camera? Box camera, 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 box
So it's a memory thing, right? That's mm -hmm. what the pictures is about. Brings a lot of good memories. And if it's me that I'm looking at, geez, you're getting older, Bob? Yeah, it's just having the people that are in it that you can remember them by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember what they looked like. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I like pictures because they remind me of events in my life that I treasure. And um, you can bring them out at will and think about them and talk about them. They are um, a good reminder of things that happen. In one word, what was it like having your picture taken for this project? Enjoyable. You know that I was kidding around. It was exciting. Yes, it was. Good day that day. I would say honored. Nervous. I can remember being nervous. <laughs> it, it was nice. It was good. I'm not a photographic person, so usually I'm out of the picture. I don't, you know, no, 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 don't do that. But it was, it was a nice day. It was a nice day. Wow. <laughs> oh. Well, what was amazing, she, she gave me a kiss. And I, I says, wow, I'm getting a kiss. Let's take more pictures. <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs>